Welcome to Kung Fu Havoc number two. This is my hollow apology because you don't have to accept it. This is my second attempt at this. I had to delete the other one because the dog was barking. The dog was barking. I took the dog out and she did nothing. Now she's in the cage. If she barks, I'm just going to let her bark. And if she got a puke or anything, the people who decided that we were going to have dogs can clean that shit the fuck up. So, now, my apology is not really going to be hollow. It is heart sent. Again, you do not have to accept it. It's fine. I don't give a shit if you accept it or not. I have no more Fs to give. But if you don't like the things that I've said, whether you are professional or not, understand something. If you're going to teach martial arts, you have to teach the good and the bad. You have to let people understand that fighting don't work like it do on TV. It don't. And fighting in street fights versus tournaments versus um, a controlled environment like wrestling or something like that is set and it has rules that you have to apply by. Now UFC, all right, so you may have three five-minute rules or five three-minute rules. I don't remember how that shit works. We can find out though. And I meant rounds. What are the rules and rounds in the UFC fight? According to Marka, UFC fights last either three or five rounds. Regular fights are usually three rounds, while championship fights and main events are five rounds. Each round in the UFC lasts five minutes with a one-minute break in between rounds. Okay. Now that we got that established, I'm going to bring up another UFC in a minute. <clears throat> those are rules and you're going to follow them you cannot hit in the nuts you cannot hit in the throat you cannot hit anywhere fatal and you cannot eye gouge even though 95% of the UFC fights somebody in there decides they want to poke somebody in the eye with a thumb or with a finger and you've seen some of the champions do it yes you have now in the streets I can't say shit about that because in the streets anything goes Anything goes in the streets because there are no rules in the streets. There's only one survival of the fittest, which is where I say it's better to be tougher than it is to be stronger. Because if you can take a beating and if you got better cardio and you can outlast the person fighting you, then you got a chance to turn that shit around like wrestling. Now, in wrestling, it's real combat. It's just the attitudes towards each other. That's a little exaggerated. Nine times out of ten, these guys are going to go body slam each other and go drink a beer. That's pretty much how it's going to work. Where um, some of the trash talk is real, some of it's not, and most of it's not. But we're all working together. We're making money. So we're all going to give you the show that you pay for. You know? Now, that being said, there's rules there. No low blows. No purposely hitting people in the throat. If you're going to hit them in the throat, you have to sell the throat. So, I thought about... Now you see how to act like that. i got to show that shit. Because it's sport entertaining. And everybody loves it. Not too many people don't like wrestling. Not too many at all. If I had a little more size on me in height, I could have became a wrestler. But I'm 5'3. The good Lord did not bless me with height. I can bitch and complain about it all I want. It's not going to change the fact that I'm 5'3. It's not going to change the fact that no one would give me a job. Too tall to be a midget, too short to be a professional. Which is okay. It's okay. There are other things that they probably could find for me to do, but I'll just have to wait until my application gets um, ready. Now understand that in a real fight, when you get hit, it hurts a fucking lot. When you get kicked, it hurts a fucking lot. When somebody forearms you in the face, it fucking hurts. As a martial artist, if you are not, not telling your students that getting hurt fucking sucks, or getting hit fucking hurts, you are doing them a disservice. 
So I make a lot of videos about this shit. And I tell people, you know, I'm fucking 49 years old. I'm old as dirt to some of you up-and-comers and to some of you professionals who got the chance that I never got. You know, it's a different ball game out there. At 49 years old, I don't make the same rookie mistakes I made at 15, which was few and far between. Now, in between turning 40 and turning 15, you know, you're bound to fuck up somewhere. And I'll tell you guys this story before, and I'll tell it to you again. I got my eye jacked by some guy from fucking North Carolina or South Carolina when my cousin stole his car. And he skipped right in front of me like a little girl and he tagged me in the face. Now, I ain't gonna lie, when I before this happened, the first thing I had a discussion with my brother and my two bros, they're not my biological brothers, but they're all my bros, J. Diz and CLS. And they was talking to me, and they was kind of laughing, because they're young guys, you know, they're really young, they're in their 20s, they're in their 30s now, because I'm almost 50. And it's like, you think you can take a hit to the face? And I literally looked at them and said, fuck no, I probably can't take a hit at all these days, because I haven't been fighting in so goddamn long. In fact, the last time I had a fight prior to getting my fucking face jacked was like, 16, 17 years old when I got jumped on my job. Hadn't been any fights after that because nobody would fucking fight me. Nobody was dumb enough to cross that fucking line. So I straight told him, I don't think I could take a hit anymore because I haven't been in a fight so long. I figured that I've gone soft, not just up here, but literally that I've become soft as tissue. So I can make fight scenes look good, but could I still take a hit? I wasn't sure because I hadn't been hit before in such a long fucking time. So when the guy skipped up to me and he tagged me, I learned two things that day. One, seatbelt suck. And two, Echo Fan Grey Wolf can still take a hit to the fucking face without getting knocked the fuck out. Because I'm driving, I slam on the brake, he skips around, he comes up to the window, BAM! And I guess he put everything he into that first one because he's like, BOOM! And I was like, I know this mother, BOOM! And I was like, you're fucking dead, buddy. That first one caught me off guard. The second one woke me the fuck up. And I was like, when I get out this goddamn seatbelt, I'm going to fucking kill this dude. I'm not going to be playing with him. I'm going to straight fucking kill his ass. And I couldn't get out the seatbelt. When I got out the seatbelt, 400-pound cop sat on me. He put his gun leg on this leg, and he put his arm under my throat. This hand went onto his gun, swirled it up, and I said, I can shoot you if I want. I have your gun. I said, what? I said, look at my left hand. I've got your gun. I don't want to kill you. I want to kill that son of a bitch that just broke my glasses and cut my eye. So, he's like, well, you stole this car. I said, I didn't steal shit. This is my cousin's car. This is not your cousin's car. I relinquished the gun and gave him my wrist, allowing him to handcuff me because I don't know what the fuck was going on. I know my fucking eye was bleeding. I know my fucking glasses was broken. But that's the best thing I can tell you right there. My glasses is broken. My eyes bleeding. Some guy who skipped around the car like Peter Pan tagged me in the fucking face. Twice. So by the time it was over, when y'all see me do my bound training, it's something I've been doing since I was 12 years old. It's been field tested. It's not always going to work. You know, when you're field testing against someone who has no fighting experience, everything works. When you're field testing against someone who has fighting experience, you have a fucking problem. So experience will always be your teacher. And you need to teach this to martial artists because if you don't teach this to martial artists and they go out because they have a black belt and they go get their ass kicked, they're coming at you. They'll be like, yo, I got this black belt. Everything you taught me, bro, everything you taught me didn't work. You know why it didn't work? Because your ass probably didn't put that fucking extra training in like I'm always bitching about in this video. You know, you go to school for an hour and 45 minutes. You can come home and put in 25 more. You can put in 30 more. Hell, you can put in another whole another hour and 45 minutes in, depending on what you do for a living. If you're a high school kid and you go to class on Friday and you know you're going to go back to class on Saturday, you can still put that extra work in. You might be a little sore, but it's worth it. It's totally fucking worth it. Put that shit in. Because the more you put into martial arts, the more you're going to get back. As martial artists, we should be more than willing to explain that to them. Because it wasn't explained to me. It was something I had to do. And if one thing I understood about fighting.
This is important. Very important. The one thing that I understood about fighting, the most important thing, you're not going to like it, you're not going to agree, and that's fine. I have no Fs to give you on that. But I'm only going to say this because it's true for me. The more you fight, the better you'll get at it. There's barely, rarely, rarely few cases where the more you fight, the worse you get at it. But there's always an enigma somewhere. But for me, the more I fought, the better I got at it. But I also had incentive. Fear is a motivator. Now, a lot of people aren't going to agree with that. A lot of people are going to say, well, what if the more you fight, the worse you get at it? Hey, that's your cue to just stop fighting and keep your mouth shut so that you don't have your teeth rearranged. But for most people, even champions that lose, they'll tell you, the more you fight, the better you're going to fucking get at it. Because you're going to learn to change your game. If your stand-up game sucks, you're going to go to ground and pound. If your ground and pound game sucks and your stand-up game sucks, you're going to go to grappling and wrestling. And eventually, you're going to find that one combo where you can put them all together and you will have a fighting style that fucking works. Now, if you put that work into that motherfucker... Then that's a different ball game. Because if you put the work in, you could be good. And yes, that dog is barking, and no, I'm not taking that bitch back outside. Because I literally just took her out five motherfucking minutes ago, and we stood outside, and she did absolutely fucking nothing. Anyway, that's also not my dog. If you're not constantly training or putting an extra time in, you can't get mad when you get your ass kicked. Now, Flip side of that, if you are putting that time in and you are getting that extra training in, you still get your ass kicked. Now you got to worry about something else. Are you learning from those ass kicking? A 9 out of 10, if you lose one fight, depending on how bad you lose that bitch, you will be motivated to never lose another one. Okay? My older sister used to whoop my ass all the motherfucking time. No ifs, no ands, no buts. And all the kung fu in the world. And got shit on the windmill. And got shit on the windmill. I got that windmill will fuck your world up. So. No. But understand. You learn from losing. You learn a lot from losing. You learn how tough you are. You learn what you can take. You learn your limits. And more importantly, you learn what the fuck you made of. Which, when number five comes around, you'll learn whatever I'm doing wrong, I'm going to switch up so that I don't do it wrong anymore. And once you figure that shit out, you're going to be alright. So, if I have offended y'all with my videos of telling you what you need to know, I have no Fs to give. Because here's that thing. Somebody has to tell y'all the fucking truth. Getting punched, getting kicked, getting hit with a weapon, whether it be a bow staff or anything, all that shit's going to hurt. But you're going to have to learn how to defend. I was taught to catch it in the wing for a bow staff. I was taught to catch anything with a block at the fattiest part of my fucking arms. So if I forearm you and you swing the stick, I want it here at the fat. Or up here at the fat. I don't want it in the center where there's bone. Because right here, that's a broken arm waiting to happen. But if I catch that bitch down here, I'm in good shape. And that works for kicks too. Now the problem is, who's throwing a kick? How good is this fighter that I am fighting who's throwing this kick who has broken people's arms? And have, has not been broken. What style is he using? What does he know that I don't know but need to know before I fight this motherfucker? If it's a professional fight, he's on video somewhere. So I'll be able to find him. Unless he changed his name, and I don't know what his former name is, so then I can't find him, so then I'm going in blindfolded. You no, know? and that shit happens. Sometimes people go into a fight and don't know who the fuck they're fighting. They still win by the skin of their teeth. But if you're, if you're fighting and you're professionally fighting, you will be able to find clips of your opponent. Especially if y'all got like championships or win-loss records. There's no professional fighter. Uh, excuse me. 
that does not have a win-loss record somewhere at some archive at some place at some company. Last promotion. Go check it. And I know you're thinking, but you're not a professional fighter. How would you know to do that? Because Kung Fu is my life. I will find whatever I need to find out about somebody if I got to fight their ass. Just because I want to fucking make it through this fight. I don't give a fuck if I lose, but I want to make it through this fight in one piece so that when I heal the fuck up, that motherfucker going to remember me. I'm a damn sure remember him, but that motherfucker's going to remember me. But you know who else is going to remember me? Everybody in the crowd. Everybody be like, oh, Echo went against this guy. Echo went three rounds this motherfucker. Echo lost in the third round. But we know what Echo did to that motherfucker. That motherfucker gonna come back and say, yeah, one of my toughest fights I had to do was against Echo Fan Grey Wolf. I do not want to fight that motherfucker again. If that fight would have went one more round, he probably would have beat my ass. This is why conditioning is important. This is also why I tell you, yeah, you went to class for an hour and 45 minutes. Go home and put another hour in. Go home and put 45 minutes in. You can pick and choose what you're going to put in. But go home and put something in. Because the more you train, the more you fight, the further you will go. And if you are a martial artist and you do not agree with this, God help you. Especially if you're teaching other students. Because they're going to need to know this shit. And if I piss everybody off, I've done my fucking job. You know why? Because it's going to make you think. It's going to make you evaluate yourself. And you're like, you know what? That little short old motherfucker might be on to something. That little short old motherfucker is on to something. You know why? Because it's a UFC reject from 1993 when I was 19 and they kept telling me get my weight up and I couldn't gain weight naturally. Understand something. I tried the unnatural method. Not steroids, but I tried the unnatural method. I tried supplements. I tried the milkshakes. I tried the fucking chewables. Everything. Wasn't meant to happen. So I never got up to wait until I turned 37 years old and joined the army. My maximum weight was 140. That's it. I swole up a little bit. Not not enough that anybody really fucking noticed because it was more muscle than anything else. I still got the fat stomach though. Because I don't do Russian twisters like talking about it. But I will tell you this. At 127, I still have my speed versus what I didn't have at 140. So you have to understand, you give, you gain, you lose, you gain. All right. In the weight I've lost, I picked up hand speed. But I also had to pick up hand speed because when I had my hip replacement, I could not train in martial arts for three fucking years. And that was torture. I picked up a bow and arrow, though. I went back to my history, my culture, and I, you know, started shooting archery. But understand this shit, man. I'm not saying this shit because I'm better than everybody else. I'm saying this shit so that you can be prepared for the fucking truth. Because here's the truth of martial arts. Getting hit fucking sucks. Doesn't matter if it's a punch, doesn't matter if it's a kick, doesn't matter if it's a fucking wooden stick. Getting hit fucking sucks. And if your sensei does not prepare you for that, well, there's a saying that I picked up in the last few years. It's called fuck around and find out, and you will fuck around and find out. Now, here's a saying that I say for anybody that I piss off. I send warnings, not invitations. Don't do anything stupid because you didn't like a video that I post. No. You will get the shock of your life. Because it never works out in the head of the person who's coming to someone else's house to bring them bodily harm. Oh, I'm going to go to Echo's house. I'm going to fuck this motherfucker up. Yep. You're going to come to Echo's house. That's where that thought's going to end. Because when you come to Echo's house, you might not be going home. No, I do not have a gun. I have a bow and arrow. But I got these guns. And I know how to use them. I know how to systematically break your fucking body apart, and that's my plan from the second you come up on me. I don't give a flying fuck who you are. I have no reflex control. So if you sneak up on me, you're going to get hit. Because I don't generally look behind me. I generally just throw an elbow. No. Ask my late father. He found out the hard way of what happens when people sneak up on me. So I, I have to constantly give people warnings when I meet them. and say, look, we're going to be great friends. I have one rule. Don't ever fucking sneak up on me because when this shit sees something or this shit sees something, even if it's the smallest little inkling of danger, boom, I throw an elbow. I do not know why or when it started other than with my father, but I throw an elbow quick and then I'll turn around and get battle ready. And, and I don't ever want to hit any beautiful ladies, but you have to let me know you're there. Do not touch me and do not sneak. If, you, if you're coming up, you have to say something. Scaring me is the worst idea that you can possibly have. That being said, I am Echo Fan Grey Wolf. This is Kung Fu Avenue number two. 
Thank you for giving me 20 minutes of your time. If I've pissed anybody off with this apology, then you just didn't get it. That being said, I will make more videos after I post these things. But until then, thank you for watching. Be seeing you.